Hello, my name is Gareth Machin. I am the Artistic Director of Wheelchair Creative, and it is my great pleasure to introduce a conversation with members of our community chorus from Wheelchair Creative's 2018 production of Rebecca Lenkiewicz's Her Naked Skin. As many of you will remember, 2018 marked the centenary of the moment when some British women were first granted the right to vote. It was an achievement that came at the end of a long and painful struggle led by the suffragette movement, and we felt it was incredibly important to engage with and celebrate the sacrifice of those remarkable women. Rebecca's play, first seen at the National Theatre in 2008, is an epic drama that plunges the audience right into the political and personal fray. It captures the key historical and political moments of the movement, but also brings to life the bravery and sacrifice of the individuals behind the headlines. Running concurrently with Her Naked Skin at the Playhouse, was an exhibition titled Our Naked Skin, co-curated by artist and curator Dr. Jack Tan and our resident artist Mirko Golden Hahn. The exhibition explored the skin between the personal and public, desire and constraint, love and politics, age and visibility, and more. Reflecting on suffragette strategies of endurance, risk, exposure, and sacrifice, the exhibition considered the value of vulnerability, openness, and nakedness as a form of agency today. The exhibition included historical artifacts related to women's activism, loaned to us by LSC Women's Library, and acted as a launch pad for the Queer Britain LGBTQ plus oral history archive. Back at the Playhouse, our production was the play's regional premiere, for which we assembled a tremendous professional cast led by Abigail Crottenden, Jane Howe, and Lorna Fitzgerald, but also featuring an amazing group of women from our community who volunteered to participate in the production. This is their opportunity to reflect on that experience. Thank you. Hello, I'm Claire. I'm the current youth theatre leader, and I was assistant director on Her Naked Skin. We were privileged to invite 22 local women varied in age into our rehearsal room and onto our main stage. Singing, chanting and waving the banner as a supportive ensemble for our professional cast. I'm going to get all the backstage gossip from some of the community cast and we will also hear from Louise Ashcroft on her self-serving artwork All Our Lives. I hope you enjoy. Hello everybody, hello, how are we? Are we well? Very well. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Fabulous. You join me today with some of the Her Naked Skin community cast, and I'm really excited today to get to interview them about their experience with us back in 2018. So let's get started. Um, okay, so my first question to you is, how did you hear about the community cast, and why were you interested in taking part in the production? I, I think something must have come around in, in the theatre, uh, when we were meeting for Dance is a, is how I uh, remember it. And um, that's how I got interested and we started chatting about it. So it, it spread. And of course, I'm a member of, um, of Studio Theatre as well. So there were people also interested from there. So it was a double uh, experience, if you like. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I mean, I like, I'm uh, going to the Playhouse very often. Um, I think you might, might have seen it in Salisbury Journal, possibly. Um, and yeah, the audition phase kind of thought, well, I kind of put me off a bit, but um, I thought, come on, you know, you've got these opportunities. It, I'd never seen anything like that before. So I thought, you know, just go for it. And I'm so, so pleased that I did. Um, and uh, yeah, for me, that was really, I was interested in seeing what was going um, on behind the scenes. That was my main uh, sort of interest because having been to see so many plays at Playhouse and I'm a huge fan. I heard through an email because we go to Salisbury Theatre so much and it came about that way. And I used to do a lot of amateur theatre and just thought it would be brilliant to have a chance to go on a professional stage and see how the professionals do it. <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed it. Wow, amazing. Without having to learn any words. <laughs> <laughs> a few words you need to learn. Mm. Some songs I remember. The songs, oh yes. The songs. <laughs> brilliant. And, and why were you interested, apart from obviously the opportunity of being on stage, what, what was it that drew you to come to the audition? 
part of it was the was the subject matter yes um, um you know and being 2018 it was such a landmark year anyway and um so yeah. yes i just thought it would be wonderful to be to be part of that actually i i agree it was the subject matter and also that having joined in something before it was such good fun when i was at college training to teach i'd done a suff a um, my history dissertation was based on the suffragettes mm -hmm. so obviously that appealed to me to mm -hmm. do like you say something different from what I was normally doing uh, but a link to yeah. something I'd done when I was 21 mm -hmm. <laughs> now a lot, <laughs> lot older <laughs> suffragettes and that whole sort of subject was very much on the radar uh, I belong to an amateur theatre in Salisbury and we put together a whole show about suffragettes, uh, which Christine was also, uh, various other people were involved in. So, so sort of on the radio, so to see that, that fantastic play come up as something that Playhouse was choosing to do to mark the, um, the anniversary of, of suffragettes um, getting going, then, um, then that you know, made it even, even, even more um, special, really, to be able to be part of it and to have that opportunity to, to create that world, really because I'm not, I've never been an Andram or done anything like that at all. And uh, the chance to be on the stage in proper costume, you know, <laughs> properly, done yeah. up, properly made yeah. up and all that sort of thing. It was just tremendous. It really was. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to also, because um, it's not as if we were just sort of standing around at the back of the stage. Each one of us were given a task of our very own and made to feel that we really were part of it. Um, not, I mean, obviously I we would be part of it even if we'd been standing still doing nothing. But it was just this feeling of involvement and just being included. And, and uh, I yeah. really, really enjoyed that. And to know that that was going to happen was, uh, was a real draw. But tell us a bit about your experience. Um, from the first time we came together in that audition or even that first rehearsal we did, and then walking out on stage for the first time. Tell us a bit about that. How did you feel? Well, I, d I felt thrilled because I've never done anything like it before at all. Mm. It was novel and it was great to do it at my age. Mm. Uh, I just loved it. I loved being part of it. Yes, that, that was the same for me, Sylvine, because I'd never done anything like that before. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that was that was a, a real... It's a thrill. It, uh, it was a real yeah. thrill. Even though I think I put Gareth's heart in his mouth when I tripped over <laughs> something. <laughs> And it was great having a group of us because there was the support of everybody else with us. So yeah. I didn't feel that nervous at the end because I was almost clutching onto somebody else when I went on stage. Not really, but there was somebody next to me and we were together, so it was fine. And the, also the professional actors, um, they, they made us feel a part of their group. They, they, did. Did. Yes. they didn't make yeah. us feel, oh, it's us and you. Yeah. Um, and they were very encouraging, very you know, yeah. supportive of us and very friendly. Yes, yes they were. They were. Yes. What yes. was nice, you know, it, 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 the camaraderie was, was lovely, I thought. Yes. And do you remember the like, badges they gave us? Yes. 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 Mine, mine's in my yes. drawer. Yes, me too. And the rose. <laughs> we all got a rose as well. I think when we first met, when we were in the room, um, we there were so many nice exercises to make us feel part Mm. Yes, the whole mm -hmm. uh, group. Um, mm. I thought those ice breaking things were very good, and the, yes. and the voice training for someone who doesn't sing. Yes, yes. Yeah. I can sing yeah. hymns, but you know, <laughs> it, was, it was terrific. Yeah, was, um, very exciting. I think we look mm. forward to it mm -hmm. enormously. What's surprising is how con contracted the time felt. At the end of it, you know, by when when you step out on the stage, you think that's gone by in a blur. You know, all the evenings that we all came together and we play, you know, start off playing games and then we do this and then we do a bit of singing and and that wasn't you know a long period of time. But then it or that rush towards the end when you know all the technical stuff kicks in and you uh, you know you can see Gareth and the technicians and yourself, you know, racing around getting lighting cues together and sound cues together and. Um, so it's it's a funny kind of time. Time is is, is you know works in a different way because you're doing you're putting a lot of work and a lot of hours in, um, which was fantastic to have that kind of luxury. But but it seemed to go so fast. By the time we actually got to performances and those you know how many performances I can't even remember how many we did. In we did three and a half weeks. 
Oh. Was it ten, ten, sort of about ten each, wasn't it? Ten yeah, each. we were in two teams, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so in, in that sense, you know, that bit just flew by, but, um, but no, it was all such positive time. It was, it was, yeah, an amazing experience, kind of, so condensed and then expanded, and I don't know what anybody else felt about it, but. Yeah. I, I loved that first encounter with the revolving stage. Oh, yes. I don't, uh, that's quite an unusual thing, I think, for... Um, I've never performed on a revolving stage before anyway. So that kind of thing about when you're on and the speed at which it went. And the, uh, uh, the thing that impressed me as much as anything else was the, uh, the scene changes, actually, at that point, because uh, the seamlessness because there were so many scenes weren't there this mm -hmm. production depended on those being um as swift and as smooth as possible uh, and the first couple of rehearsals i was thinking oh my goodness me you know it's very very time consuming all the bits in between the action but that got swifter and swifter and by the time we went up it was kind of like one lot were going on and the other lot were coming off and we all knew where we were going to be and obviously um the all the backstage staff were mm. stunning on that so that was the bit that I found most satisfying actually the um, uh, the bringing together of all the disparate scenes um, and actually when we counted it we were only on stage for about three minutes or something in total wasn't it but um, we were felt like we were involved throughout yeah. um, uh, and we actually had as much well I personally had as much a positive experience backstage as, as on stage because I, I really loved the camaraderie that developed uh, once we were in our teams um, in the um, in the dressing rooms and, and getting to know Christina and people um, uh, as, uh, in a different way than we'd been able to do in rehearsals because we're obviously having to be very respectful of the rehearsal space and not do chatter um, around the edges of the rehearsal room but um, once we were in our dressing room uh, little cliques uh, those friendships were able to uh, to develop and I, I, I got as much out of the backstage time as the onstage time in a way. We went through some market square with our banners and uh, oh, yeah. I think we ended up in the journal. <laughs> yes, we did. We did. <laughs> yeah, clinging hold to that statue. My project was called All Our Lives and it took the form of a questionnaire which you could fill out as you had a conversation with a stranger or a friend in the cafe area of the art centre and the questionnaire guided you through different discussion topics around how you would live together with this other person if you could live another life. So I imagined some lives with members of Mind the Gap who are a group of artists and performers who are over 60 in age. We were often drawing upon uh, ideas and interests and ambitions from when we were kids. And I think kids do that a lot. They role play, they are, you know, they're, they're kind of always questioning and kind of testing who they are and anything is possible. It's a very contingent space, uh, childhood. You, you kind of don't know who you're gonna be yet. And so you're potentially everything. And I wanted to give that potentiality back to adults. And so I think the project was queer in the way that uh, a query is, or a question, a question mark. Um, and I wanted to document the project. So what I did was I used all the questionnaires that people had filled in during the conversations and I used them as criteria for selecting a set of props from the theatre prop room. I also made a series of drawings which wrote up um, some of the themes that I discussed with uh, members of Mind the Gap. And they just distilled some of the values, really, and some of the insights that we'd had during those conversations without breaking that quite private space, which was the conversation itself.
talk us through those amazing costumes. Mm. Oh, because, oh, Philippa, I'm going to come to you first. You look so excited about this one. <laughs> oh, gosh, yes, yes. Just being, just that whole thing which I'd heard about, but never experienced, well, I've, I've experienced a little bit with dance, but uh, just putting on the costume and then you become um, this person. I mean, that was fabulous. And, uh, but I also felt quite sort of, glammed up as well, you know, with my hair and, you know, the yeah. way that every, every night, that was the other thing, you know, we, we, we just sat there and got ourselves all done up in our hair and our wigs and things like that. Our and, corsets. And our yeah, yeah, corsets. Oh, yeah. oh, can you do, oh, pull it tight, oh, don't, not too tight, we'll pass that. <laughs> I remember being, being told, put your boots on first before the corset, because yes, you can't yeah. bend over yes. once you're laced <laughs> in. You were all split up into classes, weren't you? You all had different classes. Yes, yes. So the yes. really reflected those. Okay. Um, even though they might have been subtle. I mean, the difference between working class and, and high class was obviously quite big, but it was really nice because I think you all had a, um, an in, like you all were different. I mean, apart mm -hmm. from the scenes where you had to look the same, whether that was in um, Holloway Prison or, yeah. you know, you were all in those same uniforms. Mm -hmm. But when you were doing kind of, out and about in the park or doing yeah. your, your chanting and singing you all had individual characters and yeah. there was so many of you it was, it was really a pleasure for the eyes because you didn't know where to look and you were what, looking at all these individual characters it was it was really amazing i really loved my wig it was an extension to me i felt <laughs> we belong to each other <laughs> and i loved it on the little stand that it had you know and i took pictures of it and i've got quite a few pictures um, and it, it just felt so personal because, yes, as Coral said, it was done so professionally and um, individually measured costumes and everything. I loved it. I loved the costumes and I loved all the changes. And I remember my coat was very imposing and everybody was jealous. I still remember, ladies, everybody was saying, wow, you've got a nice coat. And when I came out of the changing room and Gareth was walking in the opposite direction, and me with my huge hat, you know, huge wig, huge hat, huge coat. He said, wow, <laughs> that was very imposing. <laughs> I say the, the one downside, I don't know if everybody agrees, is the day, if you had to do a matinee and an evening performance, was trying to look vaguely glamorous or <laughs> on the, going out to have some, something to eat with pin curls still in. Oh, yes. I can't, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> whisked out of her bag this beautiful little bobbed wig and just put it over the top and looked fantastic and there's me with an old scarf looking like Nora Batty. <laughs> think of that? But you know there's Abigail and she got this beautiful turban on and I'm thinking you see you need to think about these things don't you? You know that's what professionalism does for you. You know what to bring to wear out over the top of your pin curls. You did a, you did a lot of waiting around in the in yeah. the in the dressing rooms um so what did you do to keep yourselves entertained during that time um and do you remember do <laughs> exactly that um and do you remember any uh, stories or memories from that just you know just that backstage kind of hubbub yeah. Mm. yeah i remember going down this, the narrow flight of stairs the backstage and we're wearing these huge costumes and having to wriggle around the very back of the stage to go in the other side but uh, so all these memories are coming back now because we're talking yeah. about yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could never remember where I was supposed to come off the stage because I haven't got any sense of direction at the best of times. <laughs> <laughs> I must have driven everybody mad, I think. It, it takes a certain, it takes a while, doesn't it, to get used to kind of being, you know, where you are on stage and then the, what the difference backstage and yeah, where it's going to be next. Yeah, it takes a while to get used to. I think you all did oh, yes. tremendously well. I mean, you know, I know you said it was like herding cats, but you did do a great <laughs> job, Claire. <laughs> I'd like to put on the record, I don't think I said it was like herding cats. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never said it for you. I yeah. had to steer that bike across and it was literally go across the stage and that's it. But I was having to be very, very, when I got the other stage, make sure the bike was propped up because you know, best one in the world. If you don't prop it up properly, it'll fall yeah. over and you yeah. go, oh, yeah. it doesn't crash and fall over and make a racket, you know. So. Um, I don't think any, well, some, I think some people read sometimes and some people like to sort of chill out a bit. Um, I can't remember anything particularly, you know, 
there were no stand up fights or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> there was cake. Well, it was quite a lot of cake. I remember. Do you remember, do you remember the vegan things that? Um, yes. Yes. Somebody brought in fantastic things you'd never tasted before. Is there anything that surprised you being part of a professional theatre production? So much surprised me, really. I think uh, we did an awful lot in the rehearsals of um, being in different scenarios and how we would feel and what class of person we were and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was quite surprised that so many rehearsals were given over to that. And I realised the value of it, but I didn't really... Um, that wasn't one of the things that I expected to happen. Mm. So that was really good. Um, I was surprised at how friendly and inclusive the, the professional mm. cast were, because that was yeah. nice. That yeah. was lovely. That was a bit of a surprise about how much rehearsal, um, you know, it, that, was in, that was involved, you know, and then how, which made us feel all the more part of it. And uh, I suppose I wasn't quite expecting that. You know, because mm. you were sort of like the the crowd, if you like, and, and just to to that, I think that surprised me was how in we we were sort of treated as individuals. Because I mean, there were how many of us? Twenty five or something. So in total, in your two teams, there was um twenty two of you. Two. That's mm. right. But each one of us, you know, was as I said yeah. before, was was treated as an individual. I think that surprised me because I thought mm -hmm. I might just be a blob in the background. The professionalism, I mean, it, it, it's not huge backstage there, is it? Um, but nobody seemed to fall over anybody or everybody knew if you were going up the stairs, everybody else moved out of the way. It was just without a word being said, it just worked. Absolutely. Yeah. It's kind of like a, a universal language backstage. It's kind yeah. of, you know, um, it, you know, everyone knows where they need to be at what time and, and how and, and when and, and also that also meant you as well. So you know where you had to be and what side of the wall you had to be in case an actor was coming off to do a quick change or they had to get around the other side quickly. It's about really knowing your track and, and how, how you're going to keep doing that from, from day to day. Absolutely. I think that was, that was one of the hardest bits actually because it wasn't until we had our proper entrances and exits yes. that we knew where we were coming on from which direction and that wasn't possible to replicate very well within the, the rehearsal space. So that was the steepest learning curve right at the very last minute is which, where am I coming on and, and which direction. That, that was the bit I struggled with um, up until the 11th hour, 11th and a half perhaps hour. <laughs> I thought it was really brave because it's not a it's not an easy win is it to put on a play like that about that subject with all these local people in it but you know it's a difficult play um, and it was a it was a very bold thing to do rather than doing something always safe. I want to know what you took from being in the production and have, has it inspired you to do anything anything else on the professional stage? Sarah knows what I'm talking about when we both performed in something in the studio theatre shortly after, didn't we? Yes. And that yeah. was to do with singing and performing. Absolutely, I think, yeah. I think it builds up your confidence. You start doing one, you can feel confidence to go ahead and do something different. Something, so something else, thanks yeah. to everybody for that. Mm, good. Mm. No, that's great. Well, Sarah and I are part of Dance Seek So, so um, for us it was, uh, it was very different being her naked skin, obviously. Um, and but it was it was just as enjoyable in a very different way i mean we just went on and did our carried on with our different local performances and uh, our show in july last year so um i haven't i haven't done anything new in in well in creative terms i've done different things but not in terms of performing i love learning more about suffragettes because i didn't know enough I'm ashamed to tell you <laughs> that I knew about it in general, but I didn't know more that, you know, as much as I was supposed to know, being a woman, being a modern woman. Um, so I've done more research since I've read books, I've watched films. So I'm much more educated on the subject. So thank you for letting me be in it because it helped me enormously um, as a person to grow. Um, secondly, I fell in love with theatre. What's not to love? Um, and so I thought I'll try and 
um, find some other outlets to my, well, I can't call it creativity, but in a way it is creativity. Just, just got the bug. <laughs> so I applied to be a film extra uh, with a couple of agencies. And since I've been in, in the film, am I allowed to say which? <laughs> I, <We are. laughs> yeah, I've been in Killing Eve um, as, a, as an extra. And I've, I also love the experience. So yeah, I've got the bug. <laughs> got the um, honour of performing at Salisbury Cathedral um, to do Earthrise, which was, uh, yeah, again, working with professionals, um, singers and uh, musicians as well, and, and uh, under the direction of Howard Moody. Um, so that, yeah, that was a, another incredible experience. Um, yeah, it's just working with professionals is is just just amazing. You can't beat it. Uh, not myself personally, but my daughter, uh, she did my hair instead of me wearing a wig because I yes. a bit a bit more, and she used that and a lot of other things from the studio theatre, the amateur dramatic stuff that we do in Salisbury, uh, to get herself a place at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama doing prop making lasting memories you have or anything that you are really proud of doing or any stories you may have of the time we'd love to hear them so it, it, does anybody have anything to contribute the last performance was um, memorable for me because it was my birthday and uh, so I had a lot of people came to watch it so that they could take me out for dinner afterwards because I'd asked them to <laughs> um, and, <laughs> Oh, and no. be before it started, the cast all sang happy birthday to me, and that was lovely. <laughs> that, that's something I really took away from it, was singing. Um, I really, really enjoyed that, and I discovered, well, if I'm in a group, I can sing. And I love the energy that we had to put into it as well. Just finding yes. energy um, to sing is, was something very, very new for me. Yes. Um, you know, just sort of, uh, you know, as we were training, you know, to the whole getting your whole body going um, and putting all of that into it and then really oh, mind you trouble learning the words but never mind we got yeah. there <laughs> absolutely <laughs> that yeah. Yeah. yes yeah. but we, yeah. we did it so that yeah that's what i took away from it is one of well one of the many things but that for me that was quite important actually yes is that that sort of almost that last verse of singing as you know we started and then the, the, the other guys, the actors, you know, came through us and stood with us. That was just, a, a, you know, a lovely symbolic moment is that you're, it's not, as you said, it's not them and us, you know, that we're all producing this noise, pushing it out there to those people in that space was, was just perfect for me. Yeah. Just feeling incredibly proud to be stood on that stage, yeah. singing your way and taking applause even if the audiences weren't huge um just to feel that you've been treated like a professional uh, it was just amazing absolutely i remember when we sang um our sort of final song uh to gareth and um harry um, yeah. the musical director and just looking on their faces where i think you know this has been our final uh or close to final rehearsal and in the rehearsal stage um, still but um, and just seeing their faces you, they would you know they didn't say you could just see there was like wow um, sort of written all over their faces and uh, yeah that was a really um, special moment and then yeah then performing it on stage um, and I just thought that was such a powerful ending that yeah I got yeah I don't always um, get that spine tingling moment but I did um, and I really enjoyed the park scene as well. So it was great. Um, you know, I really felt in character there and really sort of got inside the head of Suffragette. And I like um, Natasha. Hadn't I? History is my least favourite subject at school. So I, I feel terrible that really I didn't really know much about Suffragettes and um, just, you know, really sort of feeling their pain and suffering. Um, was yeah really powerful experience for me so yeah I will always vote they worked so hard for that vote. The whole experience for me was was um, really special I think we really created a little family a real community yes, yes. Yeah. 
and I'm I'm now talking to you. I'm, I'm remembering all these all these things. I remember Sylvine. We had a particularly quick change backstage. Yes, and we always got it in the wrong order, didn't we? <laughs> didn't we do that first or this first or that first or oh every time we did it differently. But we did had a good laugh, and you got on stage yeah. perfectly in time. I but, felt like a real actress. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. I've forgotten about that. Yes, yes Sylvie. We were we, we were mirror characters, weren't we? Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I loved the park scene, but I always felt quite intimidated because we were quite exposed. We had to come, but not on stage, into the audience while singing, walking in a very long skirt, which <laughs> I kept tripping up over. And sort of, you know, being in character, singing out loud with no accompaniment, you know, it was all quite a lot to take in and to. So I was really uh, nervous, but less nervous was every night. And then um, towards the end, I felt the breakthrough in me. All of a sudden, I felt confident and I sort of stood up high, tall, you know, and I, I started singing quite loudly. And then I turned around and Gareth was watching. He was actually there watching. And I thought, yes, finally I've nailed. I felt the moment proud of myself that I finally nailed something. And the director was watching. I was like, phew. <laughs> it's so nice to hear your memories. It's making it all come back for me as well. Nearly like nearly two years on. It's, it's incredible how quickly the time has gone. Um, mm. Thank you so much for being part of this interview. It's been so lovely to see you all again. Um, and I hope we see each other soon. Maybe not in this format, hopefully actually face to face would be lovely. Sing you along.